Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the middle of the month love reading for all zodiac signs. This is going to be for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Before we get into your reading, Aquarius, I want to wish you guys a happy Hallow's Eve. I hope you guys are staying safe. Let's get into your reading, Aquarius. Let's see what spirit has for you guys in regards to love and romance. Your first card here is the Two of Wands. Whoa. Whoa. Two of Cups. Seven of Wands. Four of Wands. The Hierophant. You guys, the Eight of Pentacles. Okay. So the past couple of readings, um, you guys are definitely ready for love. <laughs> All right. And look, funny. The bottom, King of Cups. Open your heart up, Aquarius. You're ready to move on. You're ready to embrace this new beginning. There's a lot of transformative type of energy that we're currently dealing with astrologically. And it's affecting every single sign. Um, now, with the two of wands, there is a desire or a want to manifest a long-term committed relationship. For some of you guys, you're in a relationship and you're currently dealing with the thought or idea or contemplation of marriage, commitment, moving in together, that type of energy. Now, you do have here the seven of wands and the seven of wands is, it's the fear of change. For some of you guys, we have the eight of pentacles underneath it. So what they're saying here is that you, you're ready to take it to the next level, Aquarius. For those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, you are ready to embrace this new beginning, this new cycle in your life. And it's all about foundation. It's all about structure. It's all about creating that desire to bring about stability in your home life. So this could be, again, the thinking of engagements, of marriages, of moving in with your partner, that type of energy. Now, there is a bit of resistance on your part with the seven of wands, but this is only to do with fears that you carry on a subconscious level. Now, we have Ketu in Scorpio, which is... Um, and we also have Pluto return. So what that means is that, you know, Scorpio is all about transformation. It's all about psychology. It's all about subconscious. It's about tapping into our truest, darkest secrets and desires. And with the Two of Cups and the Two of Wands, Commitment is something that is taking center stage for you guys, whether it be that you're ready, whether it be that you're contemplating, there's a little bit of fear there that's connected to change. With the seven of wands, it's like you're kind of resisting, you're unsure, you don't want to lose your self-independence, you don't want to lose yourself in a relationship, and I think that for some of you guys, that could be something that you've been dealing with for quite a while. Maybe even finding that as an excuse to get out of relationships because you felt like you guys hit a plateau where it was either commitment and you just weren't ready for it. So you use that as a defensive mechanism to start to pull away from relationships. Um, but again, with the seven of wands underneath the eight of pentacles, this is something that you're willing to work through. So... Again, Ketu being in Scorpio represents things that are deep in our nature that sometimes we suppress or sometimes we don't want to acknowledge. Um, it could have been something that connects, that, that has to do more with the self-conditioning in early childhood, childhood for you. Um, that triggered the fear of somehow putting together commitment or marriage means I'm going to lose myself in a relationship and I'm no longer independent. I'm no longer an individual. And with Scorpio being in that eighth house and Pluto, your idea or what you've believed up until now is going to be changing. And it's going to be changing because it's a nurturing type of energy. It's a loving type of energy. It's your partner 
encouraging you to continue being independent or to remind you that you are an individual and it's two individuals going into a relationship. It's them accepting your private time or your downtime or your need to be in solitude or your need to work on your car while they're in the kitchen or while they're in the living room reading a book. It's giving you your own space and understanding that they don't expect you to change who you are to be able to come together. It's acknowledging the differences between you two. And that's what changes your perspective in regards to commitments. That's your understanding or acknowledging, hey, this could be for me. I'm ready for a commitment. I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready to have a foundation that is going to be strong and it's going to be based off of understanding that they respect who I am and that they're not going to try to change me and vice versa. Now, for those of you guys that are single, definitely love is in the air for you guys. You may be dealing with the fire energy, uh, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries type of energy. For others of you, you may be dealing with an earth energy, Aqua uh, sorry, not Aquarius, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn type of energy, Taurus here. What they're saying here is, there's going to be opportunities presenting themselves to you, Aquarius, in regards to relationships and romance. You're going to have options. But more than options, you have to choose, which speaks about partnerships, which speaks about the understanding of duality, which is exactly what I was talking about for those that are in a long-term relationship. It's the same thing for those of you guys that are single. If you've ran away from commitments or relationships because you felt like they were trying to change you, like they were trying to make you into what they wanted you to become, and there was resistance there, that resistance is no longer going to be there. There's a person that is surrounding you. You may already know them, uh, or you will be uh, meeting them. For some of you guys, it could be from now all the way to uh, all the way to February for some of you guys. Um, or it could be that by February, by your birthday, Aquarius, you have already met this person. And what they're speaking about here is that this is an individual that understands individuality, that understands th they're very mature in their approach to relationships. And this is a person that has, they know who they are and what they bring to the table. And they're not afraid, just like you, Aquarius, they're not afraid to eat alone in their table. Like, they're not afraid to eat on their own if they have to. You get what I'm saying? It's like they're taking this approach to life where they're ready for commitment. They're ready to meet the person, the life partner that's coming in for them. But they're not desperately in search of it. This is a person that has reached some type of stability or some type of self-awareness of themselves that they know exactly who they are and this is the type of energy that is going to be not only encouraging you not only inspiring you but it's also going to be a person that it may start off as friendship it may start off as you know this is a person that that you crave is what they're saying. And to me, craving, it's, it's almost like, you know, the more time or the longer you get to know someone, the more you're desiring to get to know them, like, more, especially if they give you in small doses. It's like, this is how this person is. They're not going to, like, lay it down on the line and, like, this is who I am. No. They expect you to put in the same effort that they're willing to put in to get to know each other. So like I said, they're, they're not looking to rush into anything. And I think that this is an ideal type of energy for you, Aquarius, because they understand the importance of individuality. 
And if anything, I think that in the past, this person also has either walked away from relationships because they felt like it wasn't the right one or like they wanted to change them. And it's something that they weren't able to give up that easy. Um, but I definitely do see commitment here for you guys. Like I said, it could, this could be an earth sign coming in. This could be a fire energy coming in. For some of you guys, it could be a water energy as well. But what they're telling you is embrace this new, be this new beginning, Aquarius, and don't resist the changes that are coming up. Don't resist, um, don't resist the feelings that you're having. It's okay to have those feelings. It's a process, and it's going to be a process for, for a bit. Uh, so what they're telling you is just acknowledge your feelings, whatever it is that you're feeling. If you have a, a day where you're feeling a little bit emotional uh, or very thoughtful, very much in your head, it's okay. I think that these are just life questions that are coming up for you because you're tapping into your deeper self. You're tapping into your subconscious. You're tapping into, I want to know what, what life is about. I want to know the deeper questions in life, I think is something that you're going to be experiencing for the coming months, really. Um, and again, seeing life from a very different perspective. So I would highly encourage you guys to um, embrace that type of energy. It's very transformative and it's going to completely transform your life. There's major changes coming. And like I said, um, partnerships is definitely very highlighted here. Uh, commitment as well. So I wish you guys the very best. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. I hope it gives you some type of insight and we will see each other soon. Till then, happy Hallow's Eve, everyone. Bye.